The COVID-19 pandemic has even made things tougher for women, whether it's gender violence, whether it's economy, pushing them back furthermore. Even the health has been impacted. Even the vaccination drive, fewer women have taken vaccines compared to the men. To talk about this, joining us is Susan Ferguson. She's the country representative of UN Women. Thank you so much, Susan, for joining us today. Susan, to start with, let's talk about gender inequalities, which has uh, you know, been a huge issue across the globe. While the UN agencies have been working for long to stop gender-based violence, the COVID-19 pandemic has made it worse. So what can be really done to help these women? Um, well, thank you for the question, because this is an issue, a massive global issue, actually, so much so that our executive director has said that we, we globally are suffering a shadow pandemic. So, you know, the underbelly of the pandemic is this issue of violence against women, which has really shot through the roof in every country in the world, including India. Um, and we know that in India, the statistics from the National Council of Women have said that the rates have doubled since the pandemic. So it is really crucial that women still have access to the services they need to be safe and, um, and be able to survive this kind of violence. So that means that it's very important to have um, to, to be able to access the help in an environment where you can't go outside of your door. Though fortunately that's changed quite a bit in recent weeks. Um, so having a helpline is really critical and we know that here the government has set up a national helpline which is crucial and that helpline can refer women to the kinds of services that they can still access again because the government here has said that um, essential services for survivors of violence are still essential under the, the pandemic too. So there are one-stop centres that provide um, support around counselling and referral to um, safe um, accommodation or access to health services, access to police um, and law and justice services. So all of those things are really crucial. But of course it's so essential for women to know and understand that what they are experiencing is domestic violence. It's not just a normal marriage that is unhappy. These kind, this kind of um, extreme ways of treating women are, are illegal. Um, so having that information is also really critical. And having the, the kind of continuing support because one aspect of violence is that women can be ostracized and isolated. Um, within their house, unable to you know, contact their relatives. So relatives and friends really need to reach out to, to members of their family that they're worried about as well and make sure that they check in with them and can provide whatever support they can. So they're, they're just some of the things that it's very important that continue. In India, we're seeing this huge gender gap when it comes to COVID vaccines. The women are lagging far behind. What can be done, you know, to actually bridge this gap? And why do you think there is this difference? Well, yes, well, we know that we know some of the reasons for this because we've talked to some of the women about it. Um, and partly there are some myths out there about the impact of the vaccine on, on women, particularly. So we've heard myths that many women think that if they have the vaccine, it will make them sterile. Um, or it will affect them somehow when they're menstruating, um, both of which are not true. Um, and so there's quite a lot of misinformation, I think, that, that is in the community. So one thing we need to do is make sure that women hear very directly that this will not have anything to do with causing you um, sterility. Um, and countering those myths with a, you know, a barrage of information, really, both verbal and also in writing and also through TV and the media. The media has a big role to play in what we call risk communications. Um, but um, there are also some cultural issues around the reasons that women are not getting vaccinated yet as much as men. And some of those things are, it's hard for, uh, many women don't have access, for example, to digital technology, yes, so they can't yeah. register online. Yes. Um, that's another large issue that needs to be taken into account. Um, and then also it's harder often for women to travel to a vaccine centre unless they have male partners with yeah, them. To the support. Yes, they, you know, the families need to get behind them and realise that everyone in the family needs to be involved. And that's then when it comes down to the family level as well and some of the cultural barriers that exist in the, in the families that are prioritising men as the first recipients and not women. Yeah. 
so you know there again it's this multi-pronged issue that mm. and each of those things can be addressed but it does need a partnership with you know with um, the health system the government NGOs the UN whoever can yeah. can help work together on these things yeah. coming to the health aspect you know the lack of water and sanitation has far-reaching health consequences in fact we see women and girls travel long distances to get water carry heavy loads drop out of school and sometimes even they miss school during their menstruation days what can be done to actually change this that's right, yeah, that actually is a human right, isn't it, to um, access water and sanitation. And you're right, you know, women generally are the ones who deal with this water provision in the home. And also a lot of women and girls can't be educated because they have their period and they've got no, you know, um, sanitary hygiene products. Or they go to school and there's, there's, the toilet isn't safe for them. So that's another example of the ecosystem, you know, that, that infrastructure has an important role to play. So being able to make sure that schools have water and sanitation and that the toilets also are separated because a lot of sexual assaults actually occur for women any, anywhere in the world um, in toilets. Um, so making sure that they're separate so that boys and girls don't interact near the toilets is also really important. <clears throat> making sure there's lights if they're dark, um, making sure that girls can access sanitary pads at school, especially if their families can't afford it. All of these things are really critical to keep girls in schools and to allow them to have a better life in jobs. Um, but there's a whole lot of cultural norms around the kinds of work that, that women do as well. Um, and the kinds of expectations that families and communities have on women. You know, often families don't invest in their girls as much as their boys because they think, well, she will get married and then she'll go off to be, you know, the husband's property. So why bother, you know? Um, and that really needs to change as well. I was reading an article where you said everyone has a role to play, especially like with the, you know, the whole thing of leaving no one behind. So looking at the pandemic, it's even more relevant now? Absolutely. I think it's really critical now because, you know, COVID has really struck the world a terrible blow um, and it really is up to all of us to work out what can we do to contribute to that. And that's why what we do as individuals matters as well as what the government does and what the private sector does as well. There are all sorts of ways that the private sector can be involved in um, opening up opportunities for women and girls in their, in their organisations at leadership level, for example, um, because we know that women in leadership are much more likely to also think about other women constituents because they are a woman. Um, so that diversity can bring economic results as well and change the, the bottom line of profits. So, yeah. You know, like you've just said that it's important that everybody needs to chip in, do their bit, uh, whether it's the government, private partnership. So tell us about your partnership with Reckitt and how important is it for private companies, corporates to step in and work towards achieving the SDG goals? Um, well, it's critical I think and we won't reach the sustainable development goals by 2030 unless everyone is involved and the partnership with Reckitt is actually really crucial because um, Reckitt has a fantastic track record in um, working with for example manual scavengers and this is the, the program we'll be working with Reckitt on which is retraining uh, women who are really providing one of the worst jobs that, that they could um, and being able to skill them so that they can get jobs in the water and sanitation sector that are more formal or formal entirely. Um, they can get decent wages and uh, they can change their situation and have and be perceived as different as well. Um, I was very, very keen to work with Reckitt because they have this track record. Um, and also because they are already reaching manual scavengers and for the UN we have a very strong focus on leaving no one behind and so whatever we can do to support these women have more dignity and safety in their jobs and more ability to earn and control income that's wonderful for, for us as well. Thank you so much Susan for speaking with us and sharing your expertise. Oh thank you so much for having me it's really been a pleasure.